Do you want to keep your DNS traffic safe from prying eyes? Have you heard about DOH, DNS over HTTPS, or DOT, DNS over TLS? Would you like an easy way to implement safer DNS activity from your network? Well, stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to do this with PFSense. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to enable secure DNS with PFSense. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter, and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbytes.withronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's enabling secure DNS with PFSense. First, we're going to go over what is secure DNS. There's two different types. We'll go over configuring PFSense. Really easy. You've got this one. And then I'll show you how to test it to make sure that things are working right. If you've seen some of my other videos, and it was primarily I was doing with the Raspberry Pi, there is a way where you can set up what I'm calling secure DNS, and there's two different flavors. There's DOH, which is DNS over HTTPS, or DOT, which is DNS us over TLS. They're similar ways, but with some differences, they each have their own RFC for doing the securing of DNS. And trust me, it needs it. It was designed at a time nobody thought about that. But when you've got to look at things where you've got internet providers looking at where you're going and selling that data to advertisers, using it to put ads on your system. There's just some things that you can do very easily to make this happen. Let's give you an illustration of, of what I've just talked about. Now we'll go over here. This is what you look like when you're doing DNS as far as you're sending a query out, somebody sniffing someone on the internet or even at the provider will say, oh, you're going to cloudflare.com and the return information is sent back from whatever DNS you're looking at. Well, it's think of it like a postcard analogy. You're filling out a postcard, putting it out in the mail, then everybody can see it. Well, by implementing either DNS over TLS or DNS over HTTPS, it is adding basically a wrapper. It basically puts it inside an envelope that the hacker or the ISP shouldn't be able to see into. I won't say won't, but they shouldn't, because let's face it, with enough determination, anybody can do it. So it gives you a little more privacy. They're still going to be able to see what IP you're going to, but as you've probably found out, an IP can be used by more than one domain name, so they may not still really know where you're going. That's the easiest way of doing it, and the, the link will be in the show notes. An excellent presentation from Cloudflare, so that's why I kind of liberally use some of the graphics, because we're going to show you how to do this with using Cloudflare. The differences between the two standards, it's a matter of personal preference. There's no one right or wrong way. From a user standpoint, DNS over HTTPS is a little bit better because it's hiding the DNS lookup within regular SSL type traffic so that it becomes a little bit harder to kind of separate the what's down in the noise with what's going on. Again, the more security you can put on makes it that much easier. Now we're going to get to configuring this. And really this is if, if you done the Raspberry Pi route with DNS over HTTPS or TLS, you kind of know or have an idea of the all the keyboarding had to be done. With PFSense and their implementation, you can't get any better than this. So you'll first start off your journey by going to System, General Setup. Normally, you'd never go back to this tab, but this is one of those cases when that's the best place to go. We're going to use Cloudflare. There's all sorts of DNS uh, over HTTPS or DNS over TLS providers out there. I'm just using Cloudflare. Uh, they're the ones I kind of started with, and there's really no reason to, to not can stay with them for at this point. Now, I've put both their systems here. I'm only doing IPv4 at this point. My internet provider also feeds me IPv6 at the same time, and I'm just not going to set it up at this point. Something to keep in mind, when you put the IP addresses in, you also need to put the DNS host name for those IP addresses, which this is, is cloudflare-dns.com. You need to put it for both because this is part of when it's doing the TLS or transport layer security verification. It needs to know that the IP address is going to, when it gets this response back, that it does have the right system. The next thing you'll want to do is go down here to DNS resolution behavior and tell it that to use local DNS only. Now this is mainly for the firewall so that the firewall will basically look at itself and use 
the DNS configuration that you've got set up here. And while you're in here, make sure you get your time zone set right. It just makes things a little easier if you have to start doing any troubleshooting. So once you've got that done, and I would get rid of all your other DNS servers, let's, let's kind of keep it simple here. Click on save. Then when it comes back, we'll go to services, DNS resolver. If you're using forwarder, you need to change over to DNS resolver for this to work. So this should already be checked. Well, you'll want to click to where it says response to incoming SSH. SS TLS inquiries from local clients. So if you do have something on the network that is set to do this already, honor that transaction. That way you've got as much security as you can have from end to end. So that's not a problem. Network interfaces will want it to have all to select. Now, outgoing interface, you'll select just WAN. There's no reason to have anything else selected. Now, make sure you disable uh, DNSSEC support. That is unrelated to what we're doing and can possibly butt heads with the secure DNS, the DNS over HTTPS or DNS over TLS that we're, we're in the process of setting up. So make that change. I go ahead on DHCP reservations. This is a little bit off topic here. I make sure I check both of those to we, that way we get any of the DHCP leases or static map bits into Resolver. And you can see I've already got some things set up in mine. Now, once you do this, you'll go through here and click save. Going to take it just a little bit to set up and then that's it. You really can't make this any easier. I mean, there's additional things you can do, uh, access, advanced settings. Trust me, this is getting down into the weeds. Most people are not going to need to do this. Access list, again, it's going to be, you know, if you wanted to restrict who could get to the DNS resolver, and there's some cases that could be made for that. But again, don't get off the, the trail too much. Just go with the settings you've got here. And the default port will be 853 for SSL or TLS listen. So that's, that's fine. We want to keep that is, and we want to keep this set to port 53. Once you've clicked save on the two appropriate pages, your setup is done. So now we'll get to the testing. As you are installing your latest smart home device, grab a copy of my smart home checklist. This will help you record information about each device as you set it up. This will prove helpful when you need to find out where to get the firmware updates from or support on that device. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information to anyone. Okay, a couple of things we're going to do first. We'll go under diagnostics and DNS lookup. We want to make sure that the settings we put in place are actually working. So I'll go to a site I haven't used in many years, a company's product I've installed a lot over the years, and we will have it do a lookup. Okay, so it came back with an IP address, record type A, and you can do trace routes and things, but this tells us that what we set up is working. Okay, the next thing that looks going to be status DNS resolver, and you should only see the two systems you put up front. If you have anything else there, you need to run this down and make sure that you get those out of the list. So we've already done a lookup. We've, everything looks good here. If you see anything in timeouts in Houston, you may have a problem. And this is going to show us from an infrastructure standpoint, anything internally, we're not seeing anything there. Now I mentioned if you are seeing an external DNS server, go in here to general setup, make sure that this box, this is allowed DNS server to be overridden by DHCP, PPP on WAN or remote open VPN server. Make sure that's unchecked or you very well could have that kind of problem happen. We'll go down here to states and we'll tell it to look at just the WAN interface and we'll tell it to filter for 580 for 853. Now you may get some 853 and some part of the port number being used. What we're going to do is scroll down here and what you want to do is look for lines that stay established established and you'll should see one for each of the DNS servers that you've got listed. So this way it's going out of report 853 that's the WAN IP address or should be of your PFSense box. And then it's targeting the two different IP addresses. And this confirms so you can tell by the packet counts that we do have traffic going in and out. So between the DNS lookup that we've already gone over, checking it there, you can certainly check from a workstation. We've looked at states. We'll go DNS resolver again. This says you're up and running. And if you really want to take it to the next step, then you can do a packet capture. But I got a, an easier way for you to do this. 
So if we go to 1.1.1.1 slash help, and this is actually going to test your connection. So at this point, it says connecting. If you notice down here, it's giving us both the systems we connected to. It does show my IPv6 addressing, but it says no, again, because I don't have that configured. Now, here's something that you'll want to look at. From Windows, it's saying yes to both DOH and DOT. Having just one of those two is fine. Now, from my Mac laptop, because I've got the Cloudflare client installed, and I, but I've got it disabled, it the Mac is seeing it, it only shows back when I run this test, is using DNS over warp. It says, yes, again, one of those three is all you need to see to know that your DNS lookups have a little more protection to them. Autonomous system name and, and AS number, that's just from a routing standpoint. If you work with uh, BGP networks, you'll understand more what the AS number is that's just nothing you have to worry about. And in this case of the Cloudflow data center, I'm talking to one that's in uh, somewhere in Kansas City because you typically use the airport designations. This is really how straightforward it is to set up a little bit of safety on DNS. It's not total security because, like I said, they're still going to be able to see what's going on by IP addresses. The only way you can mask that is to do a site-to-site -site VPN from somewhere out on the internet, and then you're going to get into potentially some additional expense because most site-to-site -site VPN providers throttle you to a certain amount of bandwidth. So if you've got a gig fiber connection at your house, you're going to have some throttling on that. So this is at least get you a step further down the road. Your DNS is more protected instead of just throwing out the request in the mailbox and say, hey, what's the IP address? You're getting that information back, but it's inside a wrapper. So the anybody who's sniffing your connection, whether it's your ISP or somebody else, is going to not see as much. They'll see the IP addresses, but if you're going to sites that also use HTTPS, then all they're, again, all they're going to see is the addresses. They're not going to see the traffic you got. And without the server root certificates, they're really not going to be able to see inside the wrapper without a lot of work. So this is something we're well setting up. Certainly easier than the options that we had gone through earlier with setting up the Raspberry Pi to do it. And I'm not knocking the Raspberry Pi, but when you've got something that has the utility and power of PSNs, why not do it with this and add one more layer of protection to your home network? If you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.